If the sight of natural boobs or breasts offends you, then I suggest you click out of this video immediately because I'm going to be sharing a lot about breasts and bras in this video, including some breast health information. So let's get started. I've been wearing a 36, 36? No, 38 double D for as long as I can remember. My bras are not cute. In my opinion, they're just functional, wide straps, you know, they do the job, boring, they've been washed so many times, and uh, nothing exciting. So this is, again, my typical bra. The cups have a little bit of padding, and the straps in the back, or the closure in the back is pretty wide, and it looks like a dog's been chewing at it. <laughs> Definitely needs to be replaced. You can barely read the label. It says Vanity Fair 38 Double D. Yeah, my bra really works hard. And also wide straps. So again, nothing pretty, purely functional. Like most mid-size gals or, you know, plus-size gals, I always worry about my cup runneth over or spillage and also back fat and the underwire digging in and the bra strap digging into my shoulder. But it is what it is. You kind of just get used to it, right? You just get used to it. And I do like the profile that my bra does for me, you know? It's, it's nice. It's okay. But anyway, when HSIA, which is this international bra and loungewear company, reached out to me, I was really excited. Like, yeah, I'll try something new. And they're cute. Why not? So, of course, this part of the video is uh, sponsored by HSIA. They were kind enough to let me pick out six different bras. I went to their website, and they have a beautiful website. They have, oh my God, such beautiful items for plus sizes and also regular sizes. Lots of minimizer bras, lace bras, unlined underwire bras, you name it. Cute bras, sexy bras, functional bras, they have it. Apparently, most of us are wearing the wrong bra size, myself included, because once I got my measurements done, I was wearing a completely different size bra. I love this light, pretty blue powdery blue and I love the detail with the lace look how pretty that is it's so pretty it's so feminine it's so well done you can see the straps in the back let's see how many hooks it's got four hooks kind of what we're used to four hooks are down and this is a 40 triple d oh my goodness usa and euro 90 f oh my goodness h s i a see love all of the lace along the border and this lace and mesh here and then this one is a very deep blue kind of electric blue and I just love all these fun colors because normally, like I've showed you, I wear boring tan or boring black. And I used to wear a lot of colors when I was younger, um, you know, before kids. And so it's just nice to be at this size and this age and still know that I can have some fun with my brassieres and still feel sexy and cute. So yeah, look at the little bow in the middle. So cute. And all the lace. And this is the kind of bra that if it peeks through your shirt, you don't mind, right? If it shows through your sweater or it shows through your blouse, you won't mind because it's so pretty. I just love how it's constructed. And I love these little boxes, by the way. They're so adorable and white and quite sturdy. It's like they're sturdy, but nice and compact and uh, yeah you just lift the box up here and this one ooh, this one is like rose red women's underwire 40 double d rose red oh this is the one with the strap on the sides 
so it almost looks like you're wearing a blouse underneath your you know clothes so gorgeous so beautiful and all of these bras and the different styles come in different colors so each of these are different styles and they come in a number of different colors so you can see this the lace extends all throughout and then you've got these little straps on the side this bra is definitely a must-have and i'm sure you've seen this before peeking through a beautiful sweater or a button-down shirt it's just so cool i mean you could literally wear it like a blouse <laughs> if you're so bold but i love the red color i love the wide straps i love the adjustable straps it's very comfortable and yet functional and just beautiful So I really like the color of this peachy lace, really pretty, and you can see it gives me quite a bit of lift. I love the angled and vertical seams on the cups, definitely maximum lift, and can you believe it's not padded? Like I always thought my bras needed to be padded for maximum support, but this bra is not padded, and yet just the way the seams are constructed so well, you get that support. I also like that there's some boning on the side. So for those of us with a little bit of, you know, side fat and boobage fat, <laughs> it kind of keeps things in place. Really beautiful, really feminine. I love the lace. Everything I love about this bra. Light coral. So this light coral bra, similar color to the last one, but a little bit darker or it's got a little bit more pink in it. And as you can see, the shape is a lot different. Um, I like this one as well, but I think I like the last one even better. This one is kind of more like an everyday breathable bra. And it also gives me a lot of support. Um, it's quite nice and soft. And yeah, not bad. But again, I do like the last one I just showed you better. By the way, don't forget to use my referral link and also my discount code. So the discount code is Kenton15. Kenton has nothing to do with this, by the way, but that's the code I got. Kenton15 for 15% 15 off. Now, I am really excited for this black bra because, again, I love this shape. Look at it. It is so beautiful. Look at the detailed lace. Look at the shape. It's giving me lift. It is just gorgeous. It's giving me classy, sexy. The holidays are here, honey. And I'm going to be feeling myself because this bra is hot and you should get one. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you enjoy this haul. I enjoyed bringing it to you. Definitely check out HSIA. You might find something you like. I hope you enjoyed that uh, bra haul and we're going to jump right into a Q&A. Thank you for hanging out with me. So for the Q&A, we're going to talk everything breast health, breast lumps, breast discharge, not just in women, but also in men, diagnostic tests. I'm going to fire a bunch of questions and give you some answers. So hopefully it is interesting, but also educational. Okay. All right. Question number one, when is breast cancer awareness? Uh, start well actually breast cancer awareness month was in October so October 1st through October 31st and that has been a campaign that's been going on since 1985 to increase the awareness of breast cancer but also to encourage women to have mammograms it was last month if you're watching this in November so for the females out there when should you start having breast exams or when should you start having yeah a clinical breast exam well you can certainly start by doing a self breast exam as long as you have breast you want to make sure that you understand what is normal for you so usually about three to five days after your period um, you know once you are menstruating after your period three to five days after around then you want to try to palpate your breast um, in a circular motion you want to go around the breast as thoroughly as you can and also into your armpits um, because you also want to know what is normal and you want to do this in the shower while you're standing up 
or also ideally you can do this while laying down flat and if you're laying down flat you want to put your hand behind your head that sort of stretches your arm out and then palpate your armpit and around your uh, breast and all the way to the nipple um, you want to feel for any masses or any lumps you want to feel for any tenderness you want to feel for any changes because a lot of times women will find breast lumps uh, themselves you know even before the doctor does so there is a clinical exam that your doctor or your medical provider will do probably during your yearly physical uh, make sure you ask for that uh, but also you should definitely be doing your own breast exams um, at least once a month at what age should you start having a mammogram okay what age should you start having a mammogram Go ahead, answer. <laughs> All right, so the recommendations are, and there are recommendations from OBGYN organizations, there are recommendations from um, surgeons. Um, you can look it up. But in general, the recommendations are that you start having a mammogram at the age of 40. Earlier, if you have a family history of breast cancer. So yes, if you are an average woman, with no family history of breast cancer, then a mammogram should start at about the age of 40. Of course, this is something you wanna discuss with your uh, provider. Uh, make sure they know your family history. And you wanna get either a, uh, a 3D mammogram or your typical mammogram is a 2D mammogram, but the 3D mammograms um, give more images, give a little bit more um, definition or more detail um, and so that's something you might want to consider discussing with your provider or your radiologist ask is this going to be a 2d uh, mammogram or 3d mammogram and um, some of them may have a little bit more radiation than others so again something to consider can men have mammograms yes I have definitely ordered mammograms in men and yes, men can have mammograms because men can have breast cancer. So specifically in the US, out of 100 cases, randomly if you take 100 cases of breast cancer in the US, one out of 100 will be in men. So one out of 100 cases of breast cancer in the US happen to occur in men. So yes, men should also be wary and look out for breast lumps breast discharge, skin changes, any tugging of the skin, any nipple discharge, definitely something to be concerned about. Um, men who are at risk for breast cancer tend to be older in general. Uh, however, it's not exclusively found in, you know, just older men. Men who have had some sort of hormone replacement, men who've had conditions where their estrogen levels are higher, uh, men who've had any testicular problems or some sort of testicular disease, uh, men with liver disease, these are all risk factors that uh, can um, promote or be seen with breast cancer in men. So definitely look out for your husbands, for your sons, you know, for the men in your family. All right, what is gynecomastia? Gynecomastia. Okay, gynecomastia is an increase in breast tissue in males. So particularly, you may have seen this in teenage boys where they have an increase or fullness in their breast tissue. And it may be an uneven distribution of breast tissue. So again, typically seen in puberty, um, although not exclusively to puberty. You can also see a pseudo gynecomastia in men who are obese where they have an increase in fullness in their breast tissue. Usually, overall, it, it's because of an imbalance in hormones, um, whether you have an excessive amount of estrogen or a decreased amount of testosterone. But usually when it comes to puberty, it may resolve in months and it is not cancerous. So gynecomastia, again, is the development of breast tissue, uneven development of breast tissue, 
due to a hormonal cause most of the time and it usually resolves itself as the uh, young mo as the young boy grows up or as the young man develops. Now in some men it can be very distressing and they can seek surgical correction because it really bothers them to have you know that excessive amount of uh, breast tissue. So some of them again seek surgical solutions. Now whatever the case may be please make sure you see a doctor don't make that diagnosis yourself go see a doctor go see a medical provider to make sure it is indeed just gynecomastia um, yeah some men also may have this because of medications um, or again hormonal imbalance so definitely see a provider to make sure you're properly diagnosed and that it's not anything more serious. Now, what if you've had a breast implant, right? What if you've had breast implants? Do you still need a mammogram? Yes, you still need mammograms. So even if you've had bilateral or you've had breast implants, you should definitely still have a screening mammogram just like any other uh, woman out there. Uh, yeah, the only time you may not need a routine mammogram is if you've had a bilateral mastectomy where they have removed all of the breast tissue. So there's no longer any breast tissue and then maybe the woman had uh, implants placed. So it's just implants but no breast tissue. But as long as you still have breast tissue, um, even if you have had a um, uh, implants placed on top or behind the breast tissue, you should still have a mammogram, uh, screening mammogram routinely. And again, what age should you start screening mammograms? You should start screening mammograms at the age of 40 or sooner if you have a family history of breast cancer. So again, make sure you discuss that with your uh, doctor. So what exactly is breast cancer? You know, we always hear the term breast cancer. What does that actually mean? Well, breast cancer is basically when an abnormal amount of cells or abnormal uh, production of cells in the breast tissue form a mass or a tumor. And sometimes those uh, abnormal cells can disrupt normal cells and cause, you know, serious health problems and or death. So it's basically an abnormal growth of cells in the breast tissue. What if you're one of those people that is worried about the amount of exposure to radiation from getting mammograms, right? So I've heard people say, I don't really wanna get a mammogram or I just don't wanna you know, get a mammogram every one to two years because I'm worried about the radiation exposure. Well, it has been uh, very much documented or very much proven that your risk of uh, delaying uh, a diagnosis of breast cancer is so much higher, so much more dangerous than your risk of radiation exposure from mammograms, meaning that it's a lot more dangerous for you to delay the risk of uh, breast cancer diagnosis than the amount of radiation that you will get which is very little from a mammogram. So do not delay the diagnosis. If there's something there, you wanna make sure that they detect it or they catch it early. And then another thing too is you may have noticed for some women that you may see uh, your report says uh, dense breast tissue. And the thing about dense breast tissue is that it can be of concern because when you have dense breast tissue, sometimes it makes it very difficult to detect breast cancer, meaning that you can have uh, a small mass uh, that may not be properly detectable uh, when you have breast dense tissue. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the appropriate diagnostic test and that, that there is follow-up so that if there's any changes that it is detected. So that's why they always wanna know your previous mammogram because they wanna look for any changes because obviously cancer grows over time and you wanna make sure that again, that they are able to detect any changes in your breast tissue, especially if you have dense breast tissue. Issue. When is nipple discharge abnormal? Okay, so nipple discharge is abnormal 
if you are not pregnant or breastfeeding, right? So for women who are pregnant or are breastfeeding and even up, up to a couple of years after breastfeeding, you may get breast discharge. But if you do not fall into that category of breastfeeding or pregnancy, um, even if it's, you know, a few years afterwards and you have breast discharge, then it is usually abnormal. So you want to make sure that you see your provider, especially if it looks like blood um, or even if it looks like milk. So a condition where you have breast discharge abnormally is called galactorrhea. Galactorrhea basically suggests um, a problem with the pituitary gland, which is located in your brain and you making you are now making excessive amount of prolactin which is causing you to have this breast discharge which may appear to look like milk um, also some people due to medications will have breast discharge or also due to excessive breast stimulation so regardless make sure you see your provider if you are having any breast discharge make sure they properly evaluate you and evaluate your pituitary gland um, or your uh, prolactin level, which is a simple blood test, which can uh, be done. Okay, so that is galactorrhea. And I'm sure maybe comment below if you've heard of someone who's had galactorrhea or breast discharge that was abnormal. Okay, so I've been doing this video with the assumption that we all know the signs of breast cancer, right? So what are the signs of breast cancer? How do you know you have breast cancer? Or how do you know somebody else has breast cancer? Well, number one, there might be no signs. You might not actually have seen anything. You, you might not notice any difference, which is why a mammogram is very important because that will detect signs that you cannot see. Now other um, visible signs that you may have or that a person may have with breast cancer, number one, they may have nipple discharge um, or they may have a lump around the breast, anywhere around the breast or around the nipple or in the axilla or armpit, which is why clinical breast exams um, by your provider and self breast exams are super important because again if you don't know what is normal for you how are you going to know when something different changes or when something new is happening so any breast lump in the armpit or around the breast is uh, abnormal can be a sign sorry of breast cancer nipple discharge skin changes if you notice any like tugging if it appears like something is pulling on the inside of your breast tugging at the skin that can be a sign of breast cancer breast pain if you're feeling a pain that wasn't there before and it doesn't resolve with your cycle um, that can be a sign of breast cancer. So if you're seeing any changes that are concerning to you or that are different, uh, you should definitely uh, discuss that as soon as possible with your uh, medical provider. Are all lumps in the breast cancerous? Are all lumps in the breast cancerous? So if you see a lump in your breast or somebody else's breast, does it mean they have cancer? Well, a lot of times women can have breast lumps or lumpy breasts and they are not cancerous. So some women have fibroadenomas, which are solid lumps in the breast and they are not cancerous. Um, usually a provider will need to palpate and also follow up with an ultrasound, ultrasound and or mammogram. So you may not necessarily be able to tell whether that lump is um, cancerous or not just by feeling. You'll be able to feel it. Um, however, you should get further imaging if uh, uh, there is a lump there that is new. So again, not all lumps in the breast are cancerous. Some of them are benign, i.e. not cancerous and mostly uh, fibroadenomas, which are typically seen in women in their 20s, in their 30s, especially women who take hormone replacements of some sort. So what are risk factors for breast cancer? What are risk factors for breast cancer? 
Well, number one, being a woman, obviously, like I said before, women uh, tend to have more breast cancer than men in general. So um, in the US in particular, uh, one in 100 uh, uh, cases of breast cancer are seen in men, but in the other 99, it will be in women. So being a woman would be a risk factor for breast cancer. Number two, being older or being above the age of 50 puts you at a risk factor or gives you that risk of breast cancer, meaning that it's typically seen in older women. Um, however, it is not unheard of for young women in their 20s to have breast cancer. But in general, most women who get breast cancer are usually older or older than 50. Also, women who have the genetic mutation of the BR, BRCA1 or 2 gene. Um, so if you have the BRCA1 or 2 uh, genetic mutation, then you're more likely to have a uh, higher risk of breast cancer. So definitely know your family history of breast cancer and whether or not it runs in your family. How can you lower your risk of breast cancer? To lower your risk of breast cancer, you wanna maintain a healthy weight and try to get as much exercise, which is the same for most cancers. You wanna maintain a healthy weight and uh, uh, try to exercise as much as possible, right? And then also to lower your risk of breast cancer, you wanna cut back or avoid alcohol as much as possible. So definitely cut back on your alcohol use when it comes to your risk of breast cancer. Another thing you wanna do is try to discuss the risk of birth control pills and hormone replacements with your provider. Because for some women, um, taking birth control pills or uh, taking hormone replacement pills can increase your risk of breast cancer. And then also, if you are pregnant or once you have a baby, try to make sure that you breastfeed your child. So in some cases, the risk of breast cancer uh, increases in women who do not breastfeed their babies. Now you can look this up, you can discuss this with your provider um, if you want more information. All right, here's another question. Should a woman be concerned if she has one breast bigger than the other? Um, should you be concerned if you have one breast bigger than the other? No, breast asymmetry is very common. So for some women, it is a lot more pronounced than others where one breast grew significantly larger than the other. As long as that is your norm, then you should not be concerned. Now, if it changes suddenly where normally you had breasts that were the same size or same shape to you, and now one breast is significantly larger over a short period of time, then you should definitely see a medical provider about that. So like I was saying, in general, having breast asymmetry is uh, not abnormal at all you know some women have one breast bigger than the other there's also something called juvenile hypertrophy of the breast where one breast appears to grow significantly larger than the other and some people will get that surgically corrected um yeah so definitely uh see your doctor if you're finding it emotionally distressing to have one breast you know larger than the other but in general, it is not considered abnormal. And before I go, I just wanted to also mention this term, breast ironing or breast flattening. Have you ever heard of that term before, breast ironing or breast flattening? Well, it is a very disturbing practice that is being done in parts of West Africa, um, particularly in countries like Togo or Cameroon. Um, yeah, where women, uh, in particular mothers or elder women in the area, are flattening or trying to flatten 
uh, young women's or young girls' breast. So basically to prevent them from showing signs of puberty or showing any sign of development to keep them looking like young girls. Now obviously the women doing this don't feel like they're harming their daughters. Um, they feel like they're trying to protect them. And this definitely highlights a bigger issue. Um, and it's a big, big problem, but obviously we're not going to fix that problem today in one discussion. Uh, I just wanted to highlight it here as it pertains to breast health and also pertains to women's health in general. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. Definitely share this video with someone who may need the information. It might save a life. Um, thank you so much for watching. I also hope you enjoyed the uh, bra haul that I shared earlier. And definitely check out the company HSAIA. Um, check them out. I will leave their information in the description box below. 